So the three things we wanted to chat about are just importing files. Second thing is applying a lot. And then in camera proxies. My name is Eliza Tan. I'm product ecosystem manager for Adobe's digital video and audio products. My name is Fergus Hammond. I am a principal product manager on the video team at Adobe. My name is Katie Eleneke. I'm a DP. Uh, so you can go file, import, go from there. You can click on the import button here. You can go to the media browser and just double click anywhere in the project panel to get to the import screen. This represents a card I copied from the Burano onto my computer. Here's the folder where all my XOCN is stored. Click on import. For each of those folders that the Burano uses to store XOCN files, we'll preserve that folder structure. That's probably not what you want to do using XOCN because you're probably going to have to click and drag these to move them around, make a smart bin maybe, but it's kind of a hassle. So the other way to do it, this is the only one of those five ways to get what is probably your desired result, and that is to go into the import mode. So Premiere has these three modes, import, edit, and export. Click on the folder where all the XOCN is stored, and then click on import. And you can see what Premiere has done is just import the XOCN files without any of that folder structure. So if you're importing XOCN, whether it's from a Venice or a Burano, using the import mode is the way to go. So um, a project that I wrapped a few months ago was a documentary. I knew that when we came back, we had a week to turn the project around. And so I worked very closely with the editor to make sure that they could get footage ahead of time. Um, and so I did proxies because it is significantly easier to upload proxies to the cloud than it is to do the, the high-res XOCN. I did proxies in camera. And so as I was kind of double checking my footage, I had my raw footage going onto a hard drive as well as the proxies, but then I was only uploading the proxies at the end of the day. So I push and hold the menu button to kind of get into what I call the deep menus. I'm gonna scroll down to project and select in. And my record format is at XOCN. If I keep going down to proxy, select in, and I turn that on. They typically like to have a scratch track of some sort. It's not always one and two. So I would say just double check either with your editor or for yourself, know what where you're sending your channels. My audio input. So my audio input one and two are currently my XLRs that are on the side of the camera, which are on the other side. So I can change that to three and four if I wanted, internal mic, just if you want to scratch track, and that's it. And that's how I set up my camera for proxies. This is a sequence where I've used the proxies from the camera. The challenge right now is that if you right mouse button click on a file and say proxy and say reconnect full resolution media, if you're attempting to reconnect to full resolution media that has a different number of audio channels than the proxy, it will fail. You can simply go to the make offline option in Premiere. Make sure to leave the files on disk. So you can make the file offline and then you can right mouse button click, click on link media and you can link back to your OCF. Let's talk about LUTs for a little bit. So sort of the typical way that people are really used to applying a LUT in Premiere is click on the file or maybe an adjustment layer, go into a metric, go into basic correction and apply a LUT here. The problem with doing that on footage that has a lot of latitude is that the order of operations of our color pipeline is literally the way it appears in this screen. If you, for instance, change the exposure or the highlights, we're doing that after the LUT has been applied. So the problem right now is if you apply a LUT here, we apply that LUT and then we apply the other operations and that can actually end up clipping the image so the better way to do it is actually just take advantage of this creative section of Lumetri and apply the LUT there. Because then, as we're processing the image through the color pipeline, any changes you make up here, say the highlights, will be applied and then the LUT will be applied. I can add the LUT here, but it won't be in Premiere the next time I relaunch. So to do that, I can install the LUT permanently in Premiere so it will show up. This is where Premiere stores its LUTs, so it's a fairly long way down. We have a common folder called LUTs. If you make a folder in here called Creative, I'm gonna go copy my Sony LUT there. Relaunch Premiere. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see right down at the bottom of this menu is Sony s 3 Cine S-Log3, nice. and I can apply oh. that LUT. So that's the way to, first of all, apply the LUT from the right place. So number two, 
I showed you how to install a LUT in Premiere so that it'll be available every time you launch Premiere. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day.